Stable isotope labeling of amino acids in cell culture, otherwise popularly known as SILAC, is a method used in quantitative proteomics. This particular method uses metabolic labeling technique. In this video, we would learn the principles of SILAC and the experimental workflow, applications of SILAC, and limitations of this technique. So stay tuned till the end of this video. Let us begin with the experimental workflow. In this case, we have to culture cells in two separate aliquots and in one aliquot, we have to grow them in a light medium containing the amino acid lys0 or arginine0. So it's a light version of these amino acids. So there are specific commercially available media which has these compositions. And on other side, we have to grow some cells, equal number of cells most likely, using uh, lysine 8 or arginine 10, these kind of heavy media. And later on, we have to mix the cells in one is to one proportion, roughly about a million of cells are required. Then cells would be lysed using the lysis buffer and from the cell lysate proteins would be extracted. And those proteins would be eventually trypsinized to create peptide fragments. Now, Trypsin always cleaves at the C terminus of basic amino acids. So after trypsinization, one would get different fragments. So each of these fragments would be either leveled with heavy uh, arginine or light arginine. So each of these fragment would be tagged. You can imagine it like a barcode and it could be detected by in, uh, in the mass spectrometry. So ultimately, these things would be separated and in an LCMS system and in the mass spectrometry, the mass by charge ratio would be determined. If you don't know how mass spectrometry work, you can quickly click on the I button to know more about it. Anyway, from the mass spectrometry result, these two samples, either heavily uh, labeled amino acids or lightly labeled amino acids can be distinguished based on their molecular weight because m by z ratio would be different for two different samples and this is how they can be distinguished so clearly we can separate these things in a, a mass spectrometry analysis from those that was only for one gene one particular protein now for many proteins we can get a big picture about the proteome we can perform differentially enrich di differential um, enrichment analysis where we would understand how many proteins are enriched, how many proteins are reduced in uh, quantity, etc. Also pathway analysis can be per performed that can tell us that differentially regulated proteins falls in which particular pathway based on known information in a bioinformatic database. Let us take some applications. So let's say you have two samples. In one sample, you have treated with drug X and vehicle, and other sample is only treated with vehicle. And imagine the vehicle treated sample is grown in a light medium, and the drug treated sample is grown in a heavy medium. Then the SILAC method can be performed to understand whether there is a change in the proteome after the treatment of drug X. So we can ask questions like which proteins are overrepresented or upregulated and which pathways are actually changing. So this would give us an idea about the over, overall proteome change under the treatment of drug X. Now forget about drug treatment. Think about some uh, developmental time point of a cell. So let's say a cell is transitioning between three states. So there is a time T0, there is a time T1 and there is a time T2. And you want to understand how protein turnover is uh, working, right? So how several proteins are getting created, produced and degraded in these particular time frame. So one can take out samples from each of these time frames. Note that the time T0, in the time T0, you label it with arginine 0. Later on, it is washed out and now labeled with T1. Uh, now labeled with arginine 8 and eventually it would be again washed out and labeled with arginine 16. So in three different stages we have three different uh, molecular weight and that's that can be quickly di distinguished in the 
uh, mass spectrometry analysis. That means we can ask the question how the fold change of these proteins vary over time. Maybe one particular protein is upregulated, there are, there are stable maintenance of some protein levels, there are also down regulation of proteins. So all, all these uh, kind of analysis can be performed using SILAC. So in addition to peptide identification, it gives us a quantitative measure and a temporal kinetics in this data. So pros of SILAC are plenty. So this is a very quantitative method, highly accurate. Second, multiplexing is possible. So multiple samples could be uh, processed at the same time and is extremely flexible, can be adopted for various system and cell types. There are several cons. Obviously, this technique is sophisticated but expensive. Sometimes labeling is incomplete and this particular, in order to perform this technique, you need specific uh, knowledge in terms of software and data analysis. So it's not a very straightforward technique, but very efficient technique. So I hope you get an overview of this technique. If you need more notes and flashcards, you can visit my Facebook page or Instagram page. All the links are provided in the description. You can support our channel in Patreon or you can help us by super thanks option which is present in the bottom of every video. You can support us via Paytm, PayPal or UPI. See you in next video.